On Thursday, Elon Musk announced that he's secured over $46 billion in funding as part of his plan to take Twitter private. But Twitter's board still hasn't responded to his initial offer. Here to provide insight into this ongoing power struggle is Carl Zabo, the vice president and general counsel of NetChoice and a professor at George Mason Law School. So, Carl, first, can you explain for us what we're seeing play out here? Yeah, thanks, John. You know, I feel like I'm watching an episode of the TV show Succession or the TV show Billions with (laughs) the way that this is kind of playing out. So the first action that Elon Musk made was he made what was kind of called a bear hug or tender offer, where he proposed to purchase the company at $54 a share. Currently, Twitter is trading around $47 a share. So the idea behind this proposal was it was an offer so good that the board would actually be violating its fiduciary duties to the shareholders by rejecting it. What we've seen since then is the board attempt to block this buyout by injecting what's called a poison pill. What they mean by a poison pill is kind of what it sounds like. If you eat it, you will get sick. And the sickness here that's been proposed by the board is if Elon Musk purchases Twitter, then the board will what is called dilute the shares. Now, as Georgia mentioned, Musk has just announced that he secured $46.5 billion, including debt financing from Morgan Stanley and other sources. If the board continues to block his offer, does he have some other options here? He does have a couple other options. So if the board rejects his offer, there could be a lawsuit challenging. Uh, this would be brought actually by the shareholders uh, for the board violating its fiduciary duty. Elon Musk could go directly to the shareholders themselves something like out of the movie Wall Street, and ask them to just throw out the board, and Mm -hmm. then he can make the offer again. He still has a third option where he can just go to the open market and try to buy out more and more shares. So this is not the only avenue that Elon Musk has available to him if it's something he wants to pursue. And so far, it seems like he's willing to stay the course at his initial offer of $54. What prompted Musk's offer in the first place is the issue of free speech, Regardless of how this turns out, has Musk's buyout attempt been productive in terms of promoting free speech on Twitter? You know, let's remember that when Elon Musk announced his 9% uh, ownership of Twitter, they'd offered him a seat on the board. And he ended up turning that down, potentially because there were too many strings attached to it. And that's kind of what led us to where we are today with the desire to make a total acquisition. On the matter of content moderation, we've already seen the impact of Elon Musk's presence in this conversation. For a long time, Elon Musk has called for an edit button on Twitter, and we heard shortly after his 9% announcement that Twitter would be instituting an edit button. But what's really intriguing to see is kind of the 180 we've seen from Democrats and Republicans on the rights of Twitter to host and remove speech that it does or does not want. You've seen people on MSNBC, The Washington Post, and even Saturday Night Live pundits calling it a threat to freedom of speech if Musk were to take over. And you have Republicans on the other side saying, well, no, it's the right of a private business to decide what type of content it wants and wants to remove. I think the important takeaway for all of us is that we don't want politicians dictating to any private entity, whether a business, whether an individual, what it has to say, and what it cannot say. That is at the heart of our First Amendment, and it's illustrative for all of us that we should recognize that private businesses are the ones that should be making the decisions on what type of content is or is not appropriate. Not politicians, not pundits, and not people on TV. Indeed. Carl, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, John. Really appreciate it. That was NetChoice VP and George Mason University law professor Carl Zabo.